Hi, I'm Heather Castillo. Welcome to my tutorial on how to significantly reduce lag time for dance in Zoom um, and a few other extras. So what do you need in terms of software? First of all, you need um, a Zoom account and you need a Spotify premium account as do your students and then you also need to sign up for Jukebox. The link to all these things is below. Okay, what does this setup look like in the space that you are dancing? So this is my laptop that I run um, the microphone with my vocal cues and also a front facing camera. The next thing is my iPad in the back connected to the same Zoom room, but without audio joined, not muted, you'll still get feedback. You can't, you must not join the audio. And then my third is my other desktop computer in the back where I run um, Jukebox slash Spotify for my audio. And that is where I connect my earbuds so I can hear the music. I don't wanna play that music live because that would give a real bizarre feedback. So the music that I'm hearing, the same as the students, is coming through earbuds in my ear um, and that is the setup that I have uh, in my room. I'm going to show you what Health Sounds Audio demonstrated in her YouTube. I'm translating that for dance. So once you have pulled open your Zoom um, account, go into settings and on the left down drop down menu choose audio and if you want to attach a microphone because this is how you will operate computer one your front camera and it is also how your students will be cued with sound from your voice not your audio from your music this is just going to be your voice so for best quality you could hook up a microphone my students um, can hear me fine using my Mac's computer, so make sure you um, choose whichever microphone you're using. Um, and the speaker is how you will hear the students if um, you're asking them for feedback. The important settings are in advanced, and we do not want the sound compressed. So this button here we want to have on. If you're teaching tap, or anything like that, you want to have the background noise disabled. The echo cancellation doesn't matter. So those are the settings that are really important that you have for Zoom. This next setting is to show you how to operate camera two. So I screencasted this from uh, my iPad, but you wanna make sure that once you start the meeting, so this is me starting the meeting, that it's going to give you this prompt to use internet audio or to dial in and you want to hit cancel on that. And so if you look up into this top corner here, it says um, join audio. Don't join audio. Um, students really enjoy having the option to have um, either camera angle, both views front and back. They can pin one to make it larger, but um, and they're not all the same. They learn differently. They need to see things at different times. So um, it's not something that you have to do or maybe you're not able to do it. You could use your phone, um, cellular, your mobile device, um, as well as your iPad. But they have expressed to me that they really appreciate it and it makes them feel like they're getting a better understanding of the movement as if they were in a three-dimensional class. Bada boo right. All right, can I give you the next little bit? This is so 80s. You're gonna bring in your left leg into passe, contract. Six, seven, and to the forehead, to the forehead. Swing it around, around, to the forehead. Um, if you're going to choose the two camera option, your students can watch you in um, gallery view, but then they can see all their friends. And the more students that are running video, while you're demonstrating, the slower it is and the, high, the higher the chances are that there's going to be lag. So what you do is you have your students go into their settings, you do it as well, and you click on this button, 
hide non-video participants. And the importance of that is that when they're um, learning, the only view they see is the two of you because your camera is turned on. And then um, simultaneously, when I have my students demonstrate for me, I have them choose um, to turn on their cameras and I turn mine off and I only have um, maybe two to four students at a time um, show me and that way a I can see them better um, and there's less video lag um, if you want the students to not be in audio lag um, I will come back to this later but they need to be the DJ running the music from their device uh, just note to self that'll make sense when I get to part three okay so the next thing I want to tell you about is Jukebox. So the cons of this is that it requires um, a Spotify premium account. And what I discovered is not just by me, but everyone who is accessing um, my um, class in order to have it work. Uh, now students, um, ha can get premium for $4.99 or $5.99 a month. Um, I've heard both things from students. They also can get it for a month free. So if you only have about four weeks left, um, it might be worth experimenting. Um, I am considering using it in fall. Um, and most of my students had premium. So out of my 25 students in class, I only had two who signed up for a free account and everyone else already had it. On top of that, they all said that it was such a better experience on their end that they would be willing to pay the monthly fee in, um, because it was so much better. Um, so just, you know, to contextualize that. So. In your Spotify account, you sign up for premium. Um, maybe you can get some funds to have access to Spotify premium. And you create a playlist. So let's go ahead. We were Family Fridays. I invite everyone. They're sheltering in. So it's more like um, a movement exercise class with jazz principles. I did a retro one, very 80s and 90s. So all of my music is here. So then I sign up for Jukebox and I create a room, which is important. And I think you want to make it private and I'm going um, and add a, a password. You don't want everyone in your room. So I'm calling this tutorial. Um, you can invite friends by email address, but what I did is I hit create room. Oh, please enter a title for room. Room title. Um, I'm going to call this dance for now. Dance tutorial. I'm going to create my room. Okay, now I'm going to click this link up here and I'm going to get the link. Um, Let's see. Yeah, that it had copied it automatically to my playlist when I clicked that link. Um, and then this is what joined the party, what your students will see. Um, they're either going to do the web app or the desktop mobile app. Um, and they're going to have to enroll and sign up for Jukebox ahead of time. Make sure they have Spotify. Um, it took us just a few minutes. Um, on the front end of the first class that we did it. Um, so then how do you populate your music into Jukebox? So as your students sign in along um, where I am DJ Heva, because actually I had a student call me that for many years. So when I it asked me what my name is, it was DJ Heva, because you'd be a DJ in this. And, um, and their names will pop up you are going to sync your playlists from Spotify. So let's say I'm teaching Family Fridays. Yes? Um, I can add all to the queue if I know I'm gonna play them in a row. And I take on being a DJ. 
and it starts to play the music as you can hear and it will play in sync with your students so if they have logged in they're hearing this same exact music in time um if they start later all we do is hit sync audio and you hear that little pause it starts everybody at the same place where i am at if i want to go to the next song i hit skip yes super simple um if i want to go to the next song i hit skip here is the downside of jukebox i can't skim ahead and i can't skim backwards once i start a song that's it i can pause it but it still continues if you see playing on their end what it means is it's just quiet to me so resume audio means now i'm hearing it from the same place i want to make sure that we're all hearing it so in order to stop something i have to step down so here's where this is not a great platform it doesn't allow me to skip ahead or behind um i have to step down being a dj um in order to stop the song for everybody um if i'm playing the same song over and over i'm going to go ahead and check it i'm going to hit be a dj that's the next song that starts here's the other thing we discovered in terms of getting oh and i didn't have resume audio on right i'm going to sync it for everybody that we're all in the same place it sort of cuts off that first second or two so if i find that you would want to use jukebox if you were teaching a combination where musicality and timing was really important to you. Um, and you would want to start that combination maybe two to four counts of eight or, you know, 10 to 20 seconds in so everyone could get on the same page and then you could count them in. So the benefits is it really reduces lag time. My students were able to really pump their music through their phone, especially if they were using um, an external speaker, you know, they could really hear the music loud. And then they were hearing me through Zoom um, and the Zoom and the, the jukebox really seemed to sync. They felt, we even tried it with tap the other day and my tap sounds and the music were working together. On the flip side, your students will still reverberate back to you, um, <coughs> not in sync with the music, unless you allow them to take over as the DJ and jukebox. So it's the person who is broadcasting, broadcasting jukebox um, at the same time as broadcasting from Zoom that will sync. But anyone else on the receiving end, they'll be doing it in time with the music, but on your end, it, they'll still look and lag. But whoever is teaching or demonstrating who is the DJ, um, they're not lagging. Um, so if you were having students demonstrate projects or in a composition class and you were having them do something musical, they could take over being the DJ and then you would be getting them um, pretty close to real time. Uh, so the other bad side is you're running at least two devices. So one for Zoom and then one for Jukebox. I found it too hard to be running it from the same device. Um, I like to run three devices so that I can give the students the option of more than one angle to watch me. And that has really um, proven to my students to be helpful. I just can't connect the audio to one of them. Um, I'm here for any questions. Also, if you start playing around with this and make some discoveries, please comment below. Um, and I can update, but we're all in this together, helping each other. Um, and so thank you for watching my tutorial. I hope that it was helpful. I've never done one of these before like this. <laughs> um, anyways, um, take care. I hope you're all doing well. And I so believe in dancers as these wonderful, magical unicorns. We're so good at problem solving. And so even though things like platforms like Zoom weren't designed for dancers, you know, we're making the best of this moment and learning about ourselves as a field and how we can overcome and 
um, do our best in this moment. So um, I'm so proud to be a part of this community. Take care.